Good afternoon, everyone. Um, there is a deviation from your um, program today for the scripture reading. It will be Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I was glad when that house of the Lord was here at Christian Theological Seminary. Praise God. Good morning, uh, barely CTS community. It is really good to be with you today. Um, I grew up in this place. As you heard, my dad was on faculty here for some time. So it's good to be back here. I remember when the main building was being built. My mom and dad would load us into the car as kids uh, after dinner, and we'd drive on over here to see what progress had been made in the recent days and weeks. It was a brave new building for a changing time. The building isn't so new anymore. But CTS continues to form ministers for a challenging and changing world. So thank you so much for the opportunity to share in worship today. We did deviate a little bit from the bulletin because as I reviewed my notes and was reminded that part of this invitation had to do with acknowledging uh, Women's History Month, it occurred to me to perhaps bring a bit of a different message than I had been thinking um, at that time. So um, the message today will come to you under the title of Going Public. Going Public. Will you pray with me, please? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, so this is my Bible now. Um, also known as a phone. However, when I uh, think of the Beatitudes, I imagine a different sort of a Bible. When I think of the Beatitudes, I think of a well-worn Bible book with pages. Uh, maybe in a quilt, definitely in a quilted cover. With lace around the edges probably purchased at a church bazaar, handmade. I imagine grandma's Bible. It's got bookmarks all in it, tassels hanging out. And one of those bookmarks in that well-worn Bible of my grandma's is definitely at the Beatitudes. Yeah. Blessed 
are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the peacemakers. These are comforting words. They're homey words for humble, sweet grandmas marked in their soft, well-worn Bibles. Except it turns out the Beatitudes are not all that soft. And we'll talk about grandma in just a minute. (laughs) Let's look at the Beatitudes first. Let's open up grandma's Bible and see what's going on in there. Let's follow Jesus up that mountain this day and go with him alongside the disciples away from the crowds that are now gathering wherever Jesus goes and seeking him for healing and teaching. Let's go up that mountain and sit at Jesus' feet and listen as he begins to teach us about how blessed it is to follow him. Now, some of those blesseds describe ways of being, being poor in spirit, being mourning, meek, pure in heart. Some of them apply a little more doing, be merciful, hunger and thirst for righteousness, make peace, oh, be persecuted for righteousness' sake, reviled for the sake of Jesus. Yikes right? This is definitely not sounding soft. What's going on here? Well, to get where we're going, let's step back to see what's going on. Let's get some context. Let's get a high view of this mountain where Jesus and the disciples are sitting along with the surrounding countryside there, the Sea of Galilee, Judea, Syria, Rome, In Jesus' time, the Roman Empire controls the world, the politics, the economy, the military. Here are the boots, marching. All of it, all of it works together for the benefit of Rome's elite at the expense of all the others. The 99%, you might say. The theology of the Roman Empire holds that the empire rules at the will of the gods. The empire, the emperor is called the son of God, the savior of the world. When news comes to the people about the emperor and his new conquest, it's called what? It's called the evangel, right? The gospel. Y'all know this. You've been learning this since day one right here in this very place. And it starts to sound eerily familiar. The phrase, praise the Lord, is heard on the lips of the people out and about in the Roman Empire, but they mean praise Caesar. The kingdom refers to Rome. To think anything else is disloyal, to say it out loud is treason. No wonder Jesus has gone way up there on the mountain. That's my theory for why they're up there. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, not the high and mighty, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has introduced a whole new realm here, apparently in competition with Rome. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God, and the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. With these words, Jesus is turning the whole known world upside down. Random people in Rome are not supposed to see God, much less be children of God. Jesus is using the very words of the empire against itself. In Jesus' gospel, the world is God's world, not Rome's. God's will is known through Jesus, he says, not through the emperor. God's blessings extend to all the people, not just to an elite few. These words are pretty. They're sweet to our ears, but they are not soft. These are Put your life on the line, words. Put your life on the line because Jesus doesn't want these disciples to keep this Jesus gospel to themselves for their personal comfort. He wants them to mix it through all of life like life-giving salt, he says. He wants them to go public with 
the gospel of God's realm public like light so everyone can see, so everyone can be part of it. No wonder those early Christians ended up in so much trouble all the time. Not soft. Of course, Grandma of the quilt-covered Bible is not really soft either. Can I have a witness? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Many a powerful pastor or big church leader throughout the years has quaked in their boots when church women stood up. Whether we had a vote on the board or not, whether we could serve as elders or deacons or not, Grandma has never been soft. Why? Because Grandma's been reading that well-worn, quilt-covered, beloved Bible. She's been hungering and thirsting for righteousness, and not just for herself and her own group, but for other women, for, for the poor, for all God's children. Now, this is a a disciples-related seminary, so let me give a few disciples-related examples. Let's look at some disciples' grandmas. Let's look at Carrie Nation. I mean, that's a little scary. A disciple's pastor spouse, she opened her Bible and took up an axe against taverns and against husbands drinking up their paycheck before the children were fed. Not sure that's such a great role model, but definitely not soft. Carolyn Neville Perry opened her Bible and prayed for a leader to launch a global mission. Oh, God, send someone. And in that very night had a vision from God. Why cannot you do it? And so today we're a global mission church and global ministries is the result. Grandma Maddie Yonkers and her coffee clutch opened up their Bibles and then opened up an orphan's home and then a mother's and baby's home and then a home for the indigent. From their work came scores of children's and senior citizens and other benevolent facilities that serve thousands and thousands of just regular people to this day. There are so many other women, Sarah Lou Bostic, May Yoho Ward, Itoko Maeda, these women, grandmothers of the church, not soft people. They've been reading that well-worn, quilt-covered Bible again and again. They know what it takes to be strong in the faith, to bring the realm of God into this world. It takes practice. It takes practice. Ever been to a gym? (laughs) I've been known to be in one occasionally. (laughs) Or turned on your exercise on demand TV? Or trained for a mini marathon? It takes reps to get strong. You've got to do the same movement over and over again to gain muscle, to get strength. In the strength business, you cannot rest on your laurels. If you don't practice, if you don't do the reps, you become weak. You become soft, not in a good way. As with the physical body, so with the body of Christ. So with the Christian faith of the Beatitudes and of our grandmothers, Those well-worn, soft-looking Bibles are deceiving. Those Bibles are worn through repetition like reps in the gym. Their owners have turned to them again and again as a source of comfort and hope and of strength. When we open the pages of those Bibles, we are beckoned up on that mountaintop along with Jesus to sit at Jesus' feet ourselves for a while to regain our confidence in the blessings of the Beatitudes the, the, the sweet ones that comfort us and the strong ones that challenges, challenge us and make us know that we need to be strong. Those Bible words and stories then send us back into the world to practice those ways of being and doing, to repeat and become strong like our grandmas, who saw in the words of Jesus a realm of God on earth where each and every one no matter how meek or poor in spirit, is a child of God, and each one matters. These women then, through their actions, went about changing the empires of this world. It is about changing the world. Jesus ended this little section of his Sermon on the Mount by moving the focus from the one sitting right before him on the mountainside to all the crowds, to all the people around them. 
It's not enough, he said, to hold the blessing private. I want you to go public with this, he said. It might be quietly public, like salt. Mix in a little bit of salt and the whole dish gets better. Like my mom, who worked quietly for years in her congregation, in the Senior Citizen Center and the Commission on Ministry of the Region, she accompanied so many CTS students on the journey toward ordination. In every project disciples women ever entered into, subtle like a pinch of salt, but strong through practice and repetition, again and again doing the right thing, quietly changing the world. Or you might take God's kingdom public in a big way, like light out there where all can see, repetitive in mercy, practiced in peacemaking, so public that when Jesus tells us what to do, when persecution comes our way, it starts to make sense. Because everybody's not going to like it when we stand up for all God's children. Mercy, peacemaking, righteousness may sound soft, but living like disciples in the realm of God still takes some moral muscle under that soft exterior. And how do we develop that muscle? By working it, by practice, by repetition, as our grandmas did, as many of you do every day. Practice in doing right. I thank God for the strength of the women of the church today, for disciples women today who continue, who face the horror of human trafficking head on, who join our sisters in Congo as they fight the outrage of gender-based violence as a weapon of war, for standing by mothers and children torn from each other by the tangled skein of our own immigration laws and misguided executive orders. I thank God for the repetitions of filling backpacks for school children, giving shelter to homeless teens, making health kits for church world service, building houses through Habitat, marching in the streets of Ferguson and Washington, D.C., and practically every other city of this land. I thank God for the women of the church. When we open up our Bibles, we are assured that the gospel is the good news of God's love as we know it through Jesus, and that this good news is for all God's children every single one. The empire that matters is God's empire, not Rome's or any other nation. And it starts anew in every generation. It starts with us, following in the footsteps of Grandma Caroline and Maddie and Sarah Lou practicing acts of mercy and doing the reps of peacemaking and righteousness, becoming strong in the Lord Jesus and going public with it, being blessed by it and being a blessing for the world. Sisters and brothers and brothers, blessed are you, salt and light, as you put your lives on the line, as you go public for the realm of God. Glory be to God, our creator, our redeemer, our friend, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.